Hey YouTubers, it's me, Monkey Dragon here, helping all you green goblins out there. Guys, guess what? This is actually going to be my first Search and Destroy uh, gameplay. It's not my first game of Search and Destroy. I think I've maybe played a, just a couple more. I don't know. I definitely haven't gone into double digits yet. And I know if you guys if you guys are like one of my old school subscribers and you're here from Modern Warfare 3, you know that I pretty much almost exclusively played Search and Destroy. Because I just found it to be a lot better than all the other game modes because I would find that it took a lot more skill and a lot more enjoyment in the game solely because it's not spawn die, spawn die, spawn die, spawn die. You know, if you were good and you killed three people, then those three people are dead and you only got to worry about the next ones, you know what I mean? It was a little more of a, almost like a real life scenario and that's what I liked a lot more about it. And it was just really fun and I felt that it took a lot more skill to play and those people who had less skill, it was one of those game modes where if you didn't have any skill at all, you would probably suffer in it. You could probably maybe get a couple kills if you were lucky or something, you know, obviously. Call of Duty noobs, sometimes you get some lucky skills up in there. Or lucky kills up in there. But Search and Destroy, primarily, if you were very skillful, this is where you could reign pretty much dominantly supreme. And that's why I really enjoyed it. And lately, I haven't really enjoyed it solely because I feel... It's hurt a lot since you can't hear footsteps, solely for this one reason. And a lot of people think, oh, you sound whore, you know, that takes no skill. But the counter of it is what takes the skill. Is because if people are running sound whore, like besides me, if other teams are running sound whore, then you really have to be cautious about, you know, oh man, am I walking on wood or concrete or this or that? You know, oh my goodness, if they're over there, can they hear me from here? You know what I mean? There was a lot more factors that you had to take into whenever you're moving around the map. You couldn't... Because in this game, you can just go sprinting around with a submachine gun, not caring, you know, running across everything, rah, shooting, and you can't hear anything about this. That's why I think that takes less skill, is because now you don't have to worry about sound, because, you know, you're pretty much immune to everything else, and in Search and Destroy, there isn't much to detect, because if you get a UAV, you know, it's kind of hard to get a UAV, only because there's only a few amount of kills, and you can die in a game, you know what I mean? In Team Deathmatch, or Domination, or all those other game modes where you have unlimited amount of lives, well, obviously in Team Deathmatch, you don't have unlimited that kind of lives. You only get, you know, 75 deaths. But you guys get what I'm saying. Is that UAVs, pfft, so what? You get those things all the time. But in Search and Destroy, they're a little less common. And so there isn't really much to detect you in here unless you have the sensor grenade. But those things kind of really blow. They don't detect through walls or anything like that. It's just one little ping and it's more of a hindrance than anything. And Engineer is probably the only thing which is somewhat useful to detect where enemies are because you can see their equipment. And the millimeter scanner absolutely blows, which I love. I love the fact that it actually really do blows because everyone was worried about being overpowered. But it's not even honestly useful. It's just like a red dot sight. Honestly, that's the way I treat it. It might have, out of the, all the games that you use it, you might have one out of five games where it actually helps you with one kill after that. You might die a lot because you were too busy, like, oh, I didn't see him walking through the wall or something. You know what I mean? But, yeah. So I find that Search and Destroy is a lot more noob-friendly now. Because you can't really hear any more footsteps, so it takes a lot of the skill out of worrying about where people are. And there's not that many ways for people to be detected. So that's another thing that now you don't have to worry. You can just pretty much, you know, woohoo, run spray. And that's why I really don't play anymore. Because... And also, it just doesn't play the same. I don't know what it is. It doesn't... It's not the same of what it was in Mono for 3, where there was multiple different ways where you could play it. Where you can play it, like, rush out ball crazy to get to the bomb site and just kill everyone. Or you could actually play a defensive and let everyone come to you, and then you kill them all. It was... Mono for 3, there wasn't just, obviously, those two play styles. There was a lot of play styles. You could do it a lot of different ways, and that's what I really loved. But in Black Ops, it, for the amount of times that I've played it, it doesn't feel like it has that same kind of play style that I've loved in Search and Destroy for a long time. And don't, it's not like I've only played Search and Destroy Modern for 3. I remember, um, you guys may not know him, but he's an old friend of mine. Like, one of probably like my original friends on my friends list is Chingle Bling. That guy and me, we were like inseparable. We would only play hardcore Search and Destroy for, um, World at War. And me and him had these things on lockdown. It would be literally just me and him. We were so boss, dude, that we would not just sit in the spawn, but we would have it set up with our different guns and everything to we were like, okay, if they come through this passage, this passage, I don't have him. Okay, I got him here and here. And if they were like trying to flank him, boom, I got him. If they're trying to flank me, boom, he got them. It was just like a massive 
tag team. We were so boss in that game. And we would literally, like, grit out the fucking maps. Sorry for the cussing, but it's that much hardcore extreme awesomeness. And we just slowly advance forward. Just, okay, there, 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 there. We plant the bomb. Our whole team could be dead. And me and him could take out all six players. And me and, don't get me wrong, you know, it wasn't like, oh my god, he's dead. Our plan is screwing. Me and him were absolute bosses at this game. We would... Absolute train wreck in search and destroy and keep in mind that I was not the best player in team deathmatch or domination or ground war The original ground war or domination. What was it? War? I think it was just war Anyways, and but in search and destroy where there's only one life and you can use a little more strategy than in the regular game modes I reigned supreme me and him were absolute bosses in there and I've loved search and destroy ever since world at war and if you guys don't know that was my very first game of call of duty I've always loved Search and Destroy. I've always felt that there was a lot more skill in it. And even when I was a noob, I could feel that presence of these guys are better than me. They think a lot more. They know the maps or something. You know what I mean? I could always tell when there was a better team because they had a lot more skill. It wasn't like, oh, you freaking random noob. You are so lucky about this. You know, it wasn't like he spawned up behind me or I spawned in one of his little areas or I spawned trapped or something. You know what I mean? There was a lot more skill base into it. And that's what I really liked about the game mode, was that it wasn't like all the others. And I'm not saying that, you know, Search and Destroy is absolutely ruined, but it's not the same as what it used to be. I don't know what it is, guys, but it just, it doesn't feel like Search and Destroy to me. It doesn't bring back that euphoric of, yes, this is Search and Destroy. Because that's what I've always loved in Search and Destroy, was that no matter what, I could always enjoy playing Search and Destroy. If I've had a bad game in Domination or Kill Confirm or something... I could be, oh man, screw it, I hate playing with a bunch of asshole teammates, part of my language, but that would be my thought process, you should know it, and I could say, well, screw you guys, I can go and search and destroy solo, and carry the team, although I won't enjoy carrying the team every single game, but I could do it, and I'll do it right now, and that was always my thought process, was I could always, you know, pretty much do well by myself in search and destroy, that right chill guy, I thought he was a teammate, you know, first hit, was I was thinking almost like a Minecraft kind of style that, oh man, what the hell, stop hitting me. And then, oh, dang it, it's an anime. But yeah, that dude's pretty cross map. But anyways, so that was always my whole thing with Search and Destroy. And maybe later on, if they somehow find a way to change Search and Destroy, I'll go play it. But as it sits right now, I probably won't change anything because honestly, it's not the same. But if you guys are still playing Search and Destroy, what I can recommend from the games that I have played it is Run Engineer and EMP. Those two are like an absolute must. Those are really good to run, especially those two, and obviously the silencer. That's my little tidbit tips for Search and Destroy from what I've played. Engineer, EMP, or Black App, but definitely EMP. That's absolute boss. But yeah, guys, reach out in this video. So like the video if you liked it, or if you found it helpful. Subscribe to me if you want to see more of my videos. Don't forget to tell your friends about me, because who wouldn't want to win 20 bucks? I'm Monkey Journey. That's all I got, guys. Peace.